Well, good morning, everybody, or good evening if you're not in the United States. It's a Saturday, and it's time for EdChat Interactive with Tagrid Seeley. Um, we're going to be talking about facilitating remote instruction uh, for both teachers and families. And um, Tagrid has really has put together with a whole bunch of reading specialists some incredible resources that she's going to be sharing with us today. So. Also, uh, we're, we're coming through EdChat Interactive. This is our last webinar of 2020. Uh, you all probably registered through our, um, you know, through our edchatinteractive.org website. We have two already scheduled for 2021. So if you're interested, you can go to the EdChat Interactive website. Um, also, you yourselves are doing some interesting things that you'd like to share with other educators. That'd be great. Just contact us and. Uh, we're happy to host you also. We're really, this is a forum for sharing best practices among educators who are interested in, in constant improvement. So without really further ado, um, let me just hand over to, to Grid. And I think that um, not putting any pressure on her, um, but uh, I think she's gonna knock your socks off. So uh, to Grid, uh, welcome to EdChat Interactive. Thank you so much for being here. And, um, you know, uh, take it away. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. If you're joining me from New York or from the Northeast United States, if you're joining me from other places around the world, uh, good afternoon, good evening. It's great to have you. Um, I'm very excited to um, be with you this morning or this afternoon. Um, this is really an important topic, and the fact that you're joining me on a Saturday uh, says a lot about you, that you want to learn uh, new ideas, new ways of doing things, um, uh, ideas to help you with as a teacher, if you're a teacher, or if you're working with teachers, or if you're a parent looking to help your child at home. Um, I hope that you take something away from today that uh, that's going to help you in that endeavor. So I'm going to share my screen now, but uh, before I do, let me just say a couple of words about me. Um, if you didn't read it already in the introduction, I'm an instructional specialist in the Office of Early Literacy in New York City. I work with reading coaches in Brooklyn, uh, across schools in Brooklyn. Um, and I support them so that they can support their teachers that they're working with so that we can help all children learn how to read on grade level. So because of this work and because of the, what we went through with the pandemic um, this past year, uh, we thought it's a good idea to really compile uh, some really worthwhile resources that, to help teachers and help them do the work that they uh, do on a daily basis. So. I would like maybe everybody maybe to in the chat to quickly enter where you're joining us from so we can see where everybody's coming from. That would be great while I'm sharing my screen. And while Tigrid is setting up also, if you have questions or comments or ideas, you know, please enter them in the chat um, or you could even unmute yourself if, if you'd like. And, um, you know, and come up and, and, and ask. So we would like this to be as interactive as, you, as you'd like to make it. Okay, we have some people from Argentina, from Iran, from Omaha, Nebraska, Buffalo, New York. So we certainly have a diverse audience, Massachusetts, um, Missouri, so uh, this is great. So this is actually, I was telling Mitch earlier, this, um, I feel pressured because it's just like I never presented to uh, such a diverse audience from all over. So this is, this is wonderful. And it's great to hear new perspectives. So you should be seeing my screen right now. Just make sure you see full screen. Um, please yes. just give yes. a thumbs up. Yes, okay, great. Um, okay, so. Just some meeting reminders, um, and I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this throughout, but uh, just make sure please to mute your mic uh, during the presentation and unmute, of course, if you need to speak, use the chat box to post questions. 
use the hand raising feature, which you could find in the participants box if you need to share a comment or ask a question. Participate in live polls. We're gonna have a couple of live polls in this session and respond to discussions questions throughout. We would like to make this as interactive as possible. Complete the feedback. There's a very, very short feedback survey at the end. So I would like you to complete that, please. Um, if you can, shouldn't take more than three minutes or so. Okay. So our objectives for today. Um, I'm going to begin by discussing very br briefly the, uh, the challenges and the benefits of remote instruction. We're going to explore ways to enhance remote teaching and learning. We're going to discuss um, effective lesson design and delivery. And we're going to explore ways to promote student engagement in remote instruction. Some will be demonstrated during this presentation. Um, and I'm also going to preview for you the virtual library of instructional resources that I put together. Um, and I'm going to highlight some of the resources on there that you can use to help you in your daily work uh, if you're a teacher or if you're a parent or if you uh, have another role in education. And we're going to identify some of those uh, resources to strengthen uh, remote teaching and learning. Okay, so here is our first live poll. If you would please, you can just take, put your camera over the QR code or go to slido.com and put in the code 1212teach because today's 1212 uh, and just uh, share one word that reflects your feeling about remote instruction and we should see a word cloud that appears here. So that's our little icebreaker. Please let me know if you're having any issues. You just go to slido.com and just put in the code 1212 teach. And put just one, yep, one, now I'm seeing one. Okay, good. Good, I like that someone put has many strength. Good, it's not all negative, right? <laughs> okay, let's do it for another 30 seconds and we'll look at the word cloud. You can keep that, I think it allows you to put more than one. Absolutely. Needs well preparation, a lot of work is accomplished, mixed faces, exhausting, exciting, empowering, challenging. Yes, and tedious. So a lot of mixed, right? Mixed emotions, mixed reactions. Okay, so we're going to um, we're going to explore that and we're going to see how we can um, take charge of uh, remote instruction, if you will. Okay, so I want to start with the impact a little bit of the pandemic. So with the sudden transition to online learning, um, what we saw in the spring, schools were just, they were just not prepared for this. Uh, many schools, especially schools that were not used to uh, teaching um, remotely, um, they were just ill-prepared, ill-equipped, um, and it took them by storm. So what many schools found themselves doing is just not teaching anything new on a lot of schools, just uh, continue, continued remediation and just uh, reviewing what students learned already. So of course, that made students fall behind even more. So while some students have been thriving with online uh, learning, um, uh, many continue to struggle in the absence of traditional face-to-face -face instruction, um, especially students with special needs, students that have been struggling already, so they were not thriving and they were falling even further behind. Many students, especially those in low socioeconomic environments, have been disadvantaged as they struggled with unreliable internet and devices. So even, uh, so here in New York City, 
uh, a lot was done to try to provide devices to students um, so that they can use um, the devices at home to uh, be able to learn remotely. But a lot of times families were struggling with a uh, lack of internet access or unreliable internet, or uh, some families had uh, more than one child, so they had four or five children. So there were a lot of issues and it became uh, uh, a big challenge for many families. Many teachers became overwhelmed with planning for effective synchronous and asynchronous instruction. So as you, some of you put in, in the work cloud, it's, it, there's a lot of time involved. It's overwhelming. And what some, uh, many teachers discovered is that it involves a lot more time to plan to teach remotely than it did in face-to-face -face instruction. And a lot of it is because of the technology. Just getting used to uh, the new uh, platforms uh, that they were using, how to, how to, uh, how to navigate them, how to use them effectively, how to, how to uh, what, what you would normally uh, teach uh, in three minutes in the classroom took you about 15 minutes of planning or more so that you can do that well. So um, just me talking with, with the coaches that I work with and the teachers, a lot of them said that it took them a lot more time to plan. And parents are, were frustrated that now they have to adjust. Now it's not, they're not just parents, but they're also teaching, especially to parents who have very young children. Parents who have children in pre-K and kindergarten and first grade and even second grade. Um, you know, we think of children now as um, uh, technology uh, natives, but there, a lot of them, they still need practice. They need support. They need guidance about how to use the technology, how to click on the link, how to go from this screen to that screen. So parents now found themselves um, having to do a lot more than they uh, did before, where they just dropped their children off at school. And um, they, they, most of the time, some parents would just see the teacher during parent-teacher conference. Now they have a lot more to do with the children at home. So these are some of the challenges that were brought about by this sudden transition to online learning. So here is my next live poll. So I want you to think about your greatest challenge with remote instruction. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit. So if you still have the, the tab open, slido.com, again, the code is 1212teach or just use a QR code. And think about this. What has been your greatest challenge with remote instruction? Time spent planning, creating video lessons, student engagement, providing feedback, providing, <laughs> locating high quality instructional resources, and authentically, um, I lost something. So you can, um, um, learning. It went up. <laughs> yes, it right, you can actually <laughs> select more than one as well. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, I did it that way so you can select more than one because there's certainly a lot more than one. So I can see from here so far that many people, the, the, the highest one is 71% so far for student engagement. Okay, yes. So this really aligns what I, with what I have been seeing so far, um, uh, you know, through my talks and conversations with, with uh, teachers and uh, and, and reading coaches, and, and this is what I'm hearing, that student engagement is a lot, even though time spent planning is, is, also, um, uh, is also a lot, but really student engagement tops it. Okay, so the challenges that teachers and families are experiencing. Teachers have spending, uh, as we said, long hours planning for remote instruction, and a lot of it is because because again, because of the technology, because of the tools that they need. So families uh, lack, uh, lack of access to tools and resources needed to facilitate instruction and learning at home. So that is, that is, uh, that is something uh, also that families um, not having the access to, to the tools and resources to help them 
is, is something that many have been struggling with. We talk about connectivity issues and lack of access to devices. And sometimes, sometimes uh, we saw a lot that um, kids just don't log on. So it's really uh, training families too, like how to, how to uh, uh, what are the expectations for this new way of learning? that you have to log on at a certain time, that we treat it like, like it's school. Like um, it's not okay for, uh, for a child to be still in bed when, when it's eight o'clock and he's supposed to be in class, even though it's remote. So it, it's, 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 uh, it's not just the connectivity issues, but it's also training families about how to follow these new expectations for synchronous meetings. Um, and some home environments are not conducive to learning and quiet practice. So we see that that's another challenge. Um, and, and sometimes they, uh, families cannot help it. Like I said before, they have, uh, they have more than one child. They have multiple children. It's noisy. Uh, we have parents who are also working at home. There's a lot going on. So it's very hard if you are as a teacher, you're trying to assess a child remotely. You're trying to teach a live lesson. And you're, uh, especially when you're assessing children and you have to really uh, listen to what they're saying, how they're pronouncing sounds and so on, it's very, very hard to hear if the, the home environment is, uh, is not conducive to learning. So, so those are things we have to uh, work with the families about how to make um, the home environment um, uh, more conducive to learning? How do we um, educate the children about how to uh, respect their time when they're, when they're learning remotely? How do, uh, that they have to be uh, cognizant of the time, that they have to attend class, that they have to dress appropriately, they have to act appropriately. I mean, uh, it's not okay to, if they're uh, uh, eating and doing other things while they're participating in the live session. Um, and sometimes it's really parents, um, uh, and we, we, you know, I, I keep saying the parents, but it's, it's really parents are not sure of how to best support their children. Uh, they need a lot of guidance. And it's, I think it's up to the schools and the teachers um, to help them to provide uh, resources, to give them ideas, to um, instruct them about how to make learning more conducive for, especially for the very young children. So you're, these going, are some, go ahead. you're going through these. One of the things that's like popping into my mind is this magical number that, you know, seven plus or minus two, where, mm -hmm. you know, people's minds are only capable of really paying attention to about seven things, seven plus or minus two. So just imagine these, you know, as a teacher or as a kid or as a parent, you know, you can only keep track of seven different things, but you've got all these distractions in your home. It must make it really difficult to get mm -hmm. focus on the things that, you know, we know the kids should be doing. Right. And I see Michelle Alvarez here said that parents sometimes call uh, call out kids online, uh, during online class to go do chores or babysit. Yes, those are the things that that happen. And uh, I had someone who is um, uh, during a live session, the child was with the parent uh, on a bus or going to uh, the store or whatever. So yes, we, uh, we understand that parents are dealing with a lot, but things like that um, just, uh, it just just makes it even more and more challenging. Just looking at some of the chat. Uh, if you notice anything, Mitch, in the chat, well, I'm, uh, if you want to bring it to my attention too, I'm trying what is just, uh, yes, it's very hard, very hard for families coping with children. And some of those parents, uh, we forget, some of those parents are also teachers. So, so they're teaching online. They also have their own children. So there's a lot, it's, and we understand, we understand, but we, uh, I, I guess our goal is to how to make this easier, how to facilitate this for, for people. So let's move on. Not sure why it's not. One second. Okay. So I really like this goal. 
and uh, I use this quote a lot with with um, with, with my coaches. In the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. And it really helps us focus on the hope that there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, with all its unforeseen challenges, the pandemic forced many people to move out of their comfort zones and learn new ways of teaching and learning that would not have been possible otherwise. And that is really true. Think about it, uh, especially teachers. Teachers, um, if you've been teaching even for a long time and Suddenly, now, if you were not, uh, if you didn't consider yourself uh, tech savvy and you didn't really use technology in your instruction, now you were forced to, to uh, come out of your comfort zone and learn all these new platforms and new apps and new ways of doing things. So for, in a way, you know, we were forced to, to, uh, to apply and, and, and really commit ourselves to learning and attending workshops and learning how to do this in a new way. Because we really, we really want our kids to do well and we want to help our families as much as possible, so you force yourself to learn. And sometimes, I don't think, I mean, we, we never want, nobody wants a pandemic ever, but in a way, it just forced us to, uh, to learn in a whole new way that is really uh, helpful. And I don't think we will ever go back to what we considered normal before. Because now I feel like this is going to be part of how we do things, because now we see how valuable uh, all this is. So again, I'm trying to look for anything. Anyone want to share anything while I'm no, talking? It, it, it's interesting because like they, they say, every cloud has a silver lining, okay? Or necessity is the mother of inventions, or um don't let a crisis go to waste it's it, these are different aspects of the same thing that yes it's not you know nobody would have wanted the the you know COVID to take place nobody would have wanted all of the isolation uh but it did get us to try new things and as you say we're not going back to exactly what was before we're going to move forward to something that we know works better exactly exactly so let's move on. Okay, so um, so talk about embracing change. So just like we eventually recognized the immense value of the internet, when it first came out, people um, uh, were skeptical about the internet, but now we can't imagine life without it, right? We, we, nobody can imagine life without it, um, no, matter, no matter how challenging it may be. So we need to uh, really seize the opportunities and think about what is possible now that wasn't possible before. And some, some schools have become really successful with online instruction. And even some children that we hear about that weren't doing well before for many reasons are now thriving through online instruction. There's, and there's some great comments that are coming through now. Maureen Powers um, noted you know, that we're not going to return to what we had before was going to be more of a hybrid model and that parents are going to continue to be more involved than they were before and uh roberta or robin uh sullivan mm -hmm. um co commented that that there have been an awful lot of creative solutions that have come about due to the pandemic that pandemic and that's right. pushed all of us to adapt and learn new skills absolutely absolutely and um, which just yes. shows in my case you yes. can teach an old dog new tricks I mean, the problem with me is I'm still an old dog, but I did learn a few new tricks. I think I think we all are learning. I think it doesn't really matter if you've been teaching for 20 years or five years. We all had something to learn, and that's that's the whole idea. I think it just forced us to uh, learn, and the more you learn, the better you uh, become as a teacher um, and as an advocate for your children. So, so I'm going to have you now think a little bit and um, before you put anything in the chat box. So despite its challenges, what is one benefit of remote instruction? But I'm going to try something. I want you to think and write your response in the chat box, but don't click send until I tell you to. 
So you have 30 seconds and we're, remember we're trying some of the engagement activities that you can try in your own classroom. So here we go, start. Just think first, but don't, there's a timer on the screen. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to think. And then I'm going, when I tell you to, you're going to drop it in the chat box. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So learning test skills, reusable, no transportation. Yes, I could, I could agree with that. Flexibility, being uh, relaxed at home in pajamas. You can do asynchronous tasks on your own time. Some students flourish. Better use of time, more time with the family, absolutely. Increase access to education resources. It, it got me to think out of the box and find ways to get my students to do more hands-on um, in synchronous learning. Learners can consider that they will that what they uh, what they will say, refine it, and then say it. Absolutely. Very good. So I can definitely agree with with everything that you said there, and. Um, I can definitely agree with the fact that, because um, I I commuted for over an hour to get to work every day. Um, so I can definitely agree. Um, I'm still working from home. Uh, so I definitely appreciate that. There's, there's uh, a lot to be thinking about. So as, as we're going through here, and I just, we you've now done, I think in 25 minutes, four different interactive activities. So instead of just talking this whole time, you've pulled the people here into interacting. And I'm just thinking that that's probably one of the, the more general techniques that you're going to be talking about. Is that right. correct? Absolutely, yes. Why is that important? <laughs> so I just want to talk about what, I, what um, Yvette wrote here. Hi, Yvette. <laughs> <laughs> so she put introverts are being heard and are learning in their uh, style of learning. Absolutely. So this is one of the ways some children thrive. Uh, kids who were bullied before, who didn't feel comfortable talking in, 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 the, in the whole classroom and face-to-face -face instruction are now thriving in, in remote learning. They're able to express themselves more. Um, they find it easier and they're doing a lot better. So uh, absolutely, I agree. Um, so this, this technique that I just, that I had you try is called the waterfall technique. So it's one of the techniques that you can uh, use in your classroom. So it's a way to get kids engaged. So, so you give them a question just like I gave you right now and you tell them to write their answers for 30 seconds and you can use this timer, this on-screen timer. You can find these on YouTube they come in all different time segments and they're very easy to just if you're using google slide just copy the link because it's on youtube it's very easy to insert in a slide and having the timer on the screen um, it's another form of engagement it helps the kids stay on task and having that sound that comes at the end is also a form of engagement but it also the waterfall technique it helps the kids to think about their response and when they all send it at the same time, it doesn't allow others to see what, you know, what someone else wrote and you get all the responses at once. So it creates this kind of suspense. So it's, a, it's another form of engagement. And of course, the live polls are also um, interesting. I'm using, um, oops. So I, I, use, um, I use Lido. Um, it's also very easy to insert. It works well with Google Slides. You can use that. It's free, and you get up to three um, three live polls per presentation for free. Okay, so I look for everything that's free. So making remote instruction easier. So how we do this? So you set norms and clear expectations at the beginning of your meeting. And don't assume that the kids know. You need to be explicit and consistent. So just like I um, gave you these reminders in the beginning of the 
I mean, we're all adults here. I'm sure you've used Zoom or some other platform already in many meetings, so you already know what is expected, but not so with children. Even I don't know, some, sometimes adults are worse than kids. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes you'll have that one person with the, with, the, with, the, with the mic not muted and you could hear all their background noise. So we wanna make sure to remind uh, everybody, especially kids, high school, middle school, co even college, you wanna make sure that you go over these. And with the little kids, I'm gonna show you what you can do later, but don't assume that the kids know, just uh, be, very, be very explicit about what you expect. So whether instruction is synchronous, meaning live, it's happening like we're doing right now is synchronous or asynchronous where you already like recorded a video lesson or you recorded a webinar or a lecture or whatever it is, students should be able to see you on the screen. So just like you see me now presenting, uh, even in a small window, uh, they really need to see you because uh, we know like sometimes when I'm talking with somebody and I, the, the person's camera is off, you feel like you're talking to the air. It's, it's, it's very hard to, because you know, we're humans. We like to see uh, facial gestures and, and emotions. And uh, that human relationship is very, uh, that's why we feel uh, very isolated right now. We feel very lonely because we don't see each other on a daily basis. So it's very important to build that relationship with your students. They need really to see you on camera. Um, students should be able to see you on the screen. They should be able uh, to interact uh, with, you should be able to interact with them as you would in the classroom. Even joking around with them and talk to them as you would in a regular classroom helps them feel better and helps them feel they're not so far away and they get, and this is another way to engage them. So participate in discussion threads and provide ongoing feedback. So it's important, especially for the upper elementary, middle school, high school, if you using uh, if you use a Google Doc and you could use that as uh, an ongoing collaborative discussion or some other platform, uh, participate, comment, um, participate with them, show them that you're there, provide feedback on their ideas and what they have to offer. Um, again, you're still trying to maintain that relationship even though you're far away. Streamline all your tools in one place. Less is more. It's very, very hard for students, even older students, um, students and families, especially L's uh, who are new to the country who still don't know the language or are confused. Uh, it's, it's not going to help them if you have links all over the place or you want them to go here and there to find stuff. If you're going to use, let's say, go, um, uh, Google Slides, let's say, as your form of presentation. Make everything in one place. Keep your links together in one place so they can find things easier. Make all the links, discussion pages, and outside resources accessible in the slide. Um, we want to make it easier, not harder. So make it as simple as a, and meaningful as possible for the kids and the parents. Um, teach the most important content at a slower pace. Again, what we have to realize in this remote session, don't think you're going to cover your curriculum as you would in a regular face-to-face -face instruction. You have to prioritize what is it that we need to cover the most? What is it? Because remember, your time is shorter. You, the kids are not gonna sit in, the, in front of the computer for six hours. It's, it's a much shorter time, so you need to condense it you need to target what is the, 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 the real important content that I need to cover and don't, don't, don't make it too much that it becomes um, confusing or overwhelming for the kids and the parents. Okay, so I, I can't let this go without talking about lesson design. And I'm sure many teachers have their way of um, planning for lessons. But what I say is good instruction is good instruction. And it all starts with solid planning. So the same way that you uh, planned for lessons before remote instruction is what you have to do now. All, all, it, all it is is just now the changes are with the technology. The same past best practices for teaching or learning apply uh, in an online setting. So that is something that we have to remember. 
So again, this is very, very basic, but I'm sure many teachers know the lesson design. What are the parts of a lesson? With every lesson, I have to make sure that I have to set the purpose and the rationale, what students will be learning and why it's important. Kids have to know that. They have to know what to expect. They have to know what the learning target is. What is it that we're doing today? What is it that I'll be um, expected to learn by the end of this lesson? You have to have, um, you have to begin with a demonstration. You have to model whatever it is that you're teaching. You have to model, which, which we refer to as the I do. So I do it, I'm on stage. So if you look at this visual here, um, some of you might have seen this visual uh, used before. It's not mine, but here is like here we have the teacher is big. The teacher is on stage because the teacher is, is the one who's doing the demonstration. Now, as you, as you notice, the, the size of the teacher gets smaller because now as you progress, your role gets smaller while the kids' sizes get bigger. So you demonstrate, you model, you, you must provide time for guided practice. Will the kids get a chance to practice what you just modeled? You have to have some check for understanding. Let's do it together, you do it together. And then you have some independent practice where the kids, the kids have to apply. They have to be able to apply what you taught. If they don't apply, then what's the use? They have to be able to apply it somehow. And of course, you know, when we say assessment, we mean like how you go into collect data during the lesson. How would you know? If I asked you, how did you know that you were successful in this lesson? What would you say? So here is, um, uh, I'm going to show you, um, I have the lesson plan link here, like uh, just a simple lesson plan online that I put together, but I'll show you that later when I start sharing the resources, just so that I don't come out of the presentation, but I will show you that later. But this is just very basic. I'm sure this is a uh, 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 reinforcement or just uh, repetitive for some, so some teachers, but I just wanted to go over it. So now more than ever, it is important to focus instruction on critical content and use instructional delivery to maximize student learning and engagement. So, um, so now I'm going to move into my next question. So what does student engagement look like in remote instruction? So we're going to enter the responses on a Padlet, and I'm going to show you that. So uh, Mitch, would you please mind putting the link to the, pad to the Padlet, or you want me to do it? Do you remember the first oh, link? Either one, if you can quickly access it, but I, 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 I can get to it. I, I, I'll put it into okay. the, you could, um, I'll, I'll put it in a second. Okay, let me see. Okay, so it should be in the chat for everybody. Oh, you put it in. All right, okay, good. You're faster. I knew it. Okay, so if you go to this Padlet, let me just... And if you don't know how to use... Um, Okay, so if you go to this Padlet, if you don't, if you don't know how to use Padlet, let me just um, quickly, you, you can, everybody, you can still see, you can see the Padlet on my screen, correct? You can see um, it, Mitch? We, we see the, uh, yes, yes, we okay. see it on your screen. So, so if you don't know how to use Padlet, um, you just, you see where the plus sign is and you type in whatever you want. Here, you can see me typing engagement and you just click enter or you click out of the box and it, 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 your comment appears. So I see some people wrote already student engagement, student collaborating in breakout rooms, okay? So you don't have to, uh, so I, that was just my comment that says that, that was the question in blue. So as you're, as you're entering your comments, I'm going to talk a little bit about Padlet. If you're not familiar with Padlet already, um, it's an excellent, excellent tool to use to, uh, for this purpose, to 
share comments, to uh, have a collaborative engagement where you are, you post a question just like I did, and you have you have your students respond right right uh, right on the Padlet page like you see here. The good thing about it, you could also uh, here where is the one I did. Okay, so you could also change it. If you're looking at the screen right now, I can change the color like this. I can change the color. I uh, when you're using Padlet, you can also um, you could also use a variety of other ways. You could you can add a link to Padlet. Um, you could add a link. You can uh, you can add a picture. Uh, just different ways of of being creative when you're responding. But this is a great way for kids to be engaged. Yes, so I see someone here added a picture. Uh, you can add a link. Okay, wonderful. So I see lively conversations, responses to question from teachers to students, students to teacher. Yes, it's, it's great. And the best thing about it is free. Um, I, I have a, a, if you don't have one already, um, I have a link, a referral link, because when you refer people to create their own Padlet, you get a free Padlet. So what a Padlet is, is like a page like this. So you get three free of these when you start your account. And the more you refer people, uh, they will reward you with another Padlet. So you can use different pages like this. But there's a variety of ways to use it, and it's interesting and engaging, and um, it's just another form of engagement and collaboration. So let's go. It's a uh, great tool. Yep. And I will talk more about it later. Okay, very good. So let me go back to the presentation. Okay, excellent. If anyone, does anyone want to share anything that they, um, that they wrote about? Let me just look at the chat. Um, okay. Excellent, all right. It'd be interesting for people to put into the chat how they might see using something like a Padlet with their students. So if people have ideas of how either you have used it or how you might use it, that would be great. Yeah, and that's a good question, Maureen. I don't know, right? Well, if um, when you share your screen, if you don't share computer sounds, then the ping wouldn't come. But I think that Tigrid is gonna be sharing things where she needs the sound, so... Um, I, you know, that's why uh, that's why you're you hearing the ping when somebody adds something. Yes, I know. I was I was trying to uh, silence that too. It's because yeah, I had it's the way I shared. Unfortunately, um, let me see. You want me to unshare again? No, because we're uh, done with the Padlet. So this so yes, there's no. We're done with Padlet, but it's probably because I I clicked that um, to include my computer sound. That's why you got that. I'm sorry, but but that's how you can control it. Um, all right, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you um, sample Padlets later. I'm going to show you more about what how people are using it um, in a very interesting way. Okay. All right. So student engagement. So really, student needs the the whole idea is students need opportunities to discuss and process new information, not just read or listen passively. Um, the worst thing that you can do is just to have your lessons like a lecture and you're reading and um, they, uh, children, once you take your eyes off your camera and you start reading from your lesson or from your screen, um, kids can see that also. And just like in the classroom, when you turn your back, you lost your kids. So we have to, you have to think about all the ways to get them engaged while you're teaching. So they can't just be listening passively. You have to make sure to incorporate things like this to get them engaged. They need to be engaged in active learning. 
Well, and I love Angie's comment. I think that this, um, I think Padlet can also be used as a great brainstorming. Absolutely, tool. and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something similar to that that a teacher did. Um, uh, a little bit later, when I go to the virtual library, I'm going to show you what someone did with that. Teachers need to use quick formative assessments to monitor student understanding and thought process um, while ensuring they continue to be fully engaged. So this is a way to, to, to monitor what kids are thinking, um, for you to also monitor misconceptions or maybe something that you need to reteach. But this is a way we can't just have kids sitting in the back just listening because then this is how we quickly lose them. And we have also a lot of kids who don't turn on their cameras, right? They're afraid to turn on the cameras. They're not engaged. But if we do things like that where they're involved, where, where it's fun for them to be on camera, we want to encourage them to do that as well. And as Roberta Robin Sullivan says, um, it's also good for, for those of you who do professional development, who run professional development, this is a great professional development tool. Absolutely. And it Absolutely. can be used for the do now section of, of lessons as, G Absolutely. as Gina. And, and, I'll, and I'll show you some things. Very good. Okay. So we need to use to, uh, move to interactive methods to practice and learn new content while taking ownership of learning. So pose questions that students must respond to. Encourage students to ask their own questions. Um, that's a great way, really, to encourage kids to put their own questions in something like this, whether it's uh, the Padlet or the chat box. We're really encouraging kids to come up with their own questions as another way to get them to be engaged. Um, use digital tools just like the Padlet I showed you, Jamboard. I'm going to show you that next uh, a little in a little bit. And digital whiteboards to promote creative expression and collaborative responses. Use Google Doc to help students respond and interact with the text via comments. So this is also a great idea, especially if you have, you're have you working with middle school uh, students or high school students, you can put a text in Google Doc um, or a story or text and have them uh, put comments uh, and respond to each other's comments. It's, again, it's another way to interact with each other. Use surveys and live polls like I've been using. So Slido is one, Mentimeter, Poll Everywhere. These two other ones are famous ones. But Slido, I, I like Slido. It's easy to use and it's free. So is Mentimeter. Set up breakout rooms in Zoom or Google Hangout to hold small group discussions. This is a great, great way to, um, to set up. Uh, when you set up breakout rooms, it's a great way to work with students in small groups to help them interact with each other. Um, and you can, th there's a video that I can share where uh, someone is explaining exactly how to set that up in Zoom. So it's, um, it's very worthwhile to use. Okay, so more ways to engage students, ask students a question and provide wait time. It's so important to provide wait time, just like we did in the classroom. It's important to provide wait time to prepare a response because it takes the pressure of the students and students are still even behind the, the the screen they're still afraid of being called on um, i mean we all know that we get nervous especially when we're not ready with a, with an answer or we're not sure so it's important to tell them okay here's the question i'm going to give you three minutes to think about your answer prepare your answer this way they are prepared to share something they can even work with a partner have students use the chat box to respond to questions and comment about each other's responses. Provide a prompt before the start of class and have students prepare a response to share at the start of class. That's another way to be, to be ready. To, so they come in prepared and they know what to share. Use the waterfall chat technique. That's the one I, I modeled with you with the timer. Use video clips in your lesson. A great to a great way to be to make your presentations or lessons interactive is to include a video clip. A short video clip that demonstrates something is another way to engage. Now, it's interesting to me how as you're going through these techniques, you've used these techniques throughout this session so far today. Was that by accident by some somehow or no, it's not by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I meant to demonstrate some of them just because of the time. Um, but I wanted you to get a, a, a feel of how it is. Okay, so 
we were talking before about online meeting etiquette, how, so, how it's so important to uh, make sure that you go over with children what to do during, um, live, during a live session. So when you're working with like, let's kindergarten children, for instance, or first grade, you wanna demonstrate what it is, what is it, how it's like to, with the mic on and the mic off. So like you see, I included this uh, math lesson, first grade uh, video here. I'm not gonna play it because we don't have time, but I'm just showing you here. So this teacher is using these props. So she's reminding the, the, the kids, your mic is off, turn it off. Your mic is on, you put up the, the other one when the mic is on. So you need to teach this. Um, these are things that have to be taught to the kids. Again, don't assume that they know. Take the time to really orient them and orient the parents about what is expected during online instruction. So here's the next poll. <laughs> okay, in your experience, what do most teachers struggle with in relation to lesson delivery? What do you think most teachers struggle with? Just a quick poll and we'll move on. So please enter your, enter your responses. Okay. So being the, being the troublemaker here, um, <laughs> there's, one, there's one item that wasn't on the list that I think is, you've touched on anyhow, but you know, make, you know student well-being and even a teacher well-being, I, th I think those are two additional things that teachers struggle with, making sure the, the students are well, you know, emotionally and health, um, and, and, Absolutely. Taking, and taking care of their own emotional and health needs as well. Absolutely, I definitely agree. And I, that is something that I should have included on here. But um, I guess maybe you could include it with meeting the needs of all learners, which we see. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You did cover it. Okay. So meeting the needs of all learners, you see 69%. Absolutely. And I think that, and I definitely agree with that result. Um, engaging students and meeting the needs of all learners. Um, definitely. Uh, some teachers are struggling with how do you differentiate? How do we meet the needs of the of the English language learners and the school students with special needs and everyone else that needs um, uh, differentiation in some way? So we're going to um, talk about that. So now I'm ready. I'm almost ready to share with you um, to share with you my virtual library that I created, um, which as I mentioned before, everything I included on here, I think is high quality. And, uh, and I say that because since the pandemic, a lot has been shared. This so, it's just an ever overwhelming uh, sharing of resources from all different places, but it's really, is like, how do you condense it and how do you select what is high quality and what is meaningful um, and accessible to everyone and engaging so, um, and easy to use and above all free. So everything that I'm going to show you um, on this, um, on this uh, virtual library of instructional resources is, um, uh, is really all of that and more. So if you, if you wanna access the QR code and uh, Mitch, I think is going to put the link in the, in the chat and let me go through. Okay, so I just put the link in the chat as well. All right, so I'm going to come out of this now. All right, so here it is. Okay, you can see it now, right? On the screen, good. I see some people in here already. So here's a table of contents. Okay, and each link here on this sheet, you get, if you click here, you'll see the link. So the first thing that that's here is the, you'll see the, the uh, read alouds page. So I created here a, a collection of read aloud uh, resources. So the first one, and I think many people have become familiar with this one is Storyline Online. So I'm going to show you this. Okay, so Storyline Online 
is an excellent, excellent, excellent website to go to for beautiful free books uh, that are read by the Screen Actors Guild. They're read by famous people and um, they're really, really beautiful. So here is one. Um, just, I'm gonna play the whole thing. But you can hear it, correct? You can yeah. hear it. That's why I put the Welcome to Storyline Online brought to you by the Screen Actors Guild Foundation. Okay. I'm Molly Ephraim, and today yeah, we're gonna be reading Hanukkah in Alaska by Barbara Brown, illustrated by Stacy Schwett. Okay. So. I really love reading, but most of all, I like reading to other people, people young. Okay. So uh, obviously I'm not going to go through all of it right now, but you can explore this beautiful, beautiful books. This is start, this started a few years ago. They only had a, few, uh, a small collection of books, but it's been growing and growing and growing. And some of them, um, uh, uh, come with activity guides, but I'm not quite sure if you, um, if you, if this is, hmm, I didn't explore this, but, but again, the reading is, um, fluent. It's, it's the actors read with fluency and expression. It's beautiful. Uh, there are many, many books, and this is great, not just for teachers, but it's also, um, for families, of course, to use at home with the children anytime. So this is one wonderful tool that you can use for real aloud. Uh, Just Books also is another great tool. Okay, another, uh, 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 here's Polar Bear Express. Again, the, the, the books are beautiful. Um, the Polar Express, written by Chris Van Allsburg. Okay. So, and there are, they're uh, set up by categories. There is also books in other languages. So if you are in other countries, there's books in Spanish, books in French, books in Italian, Dutch, Japanese. So it's really, um, really beautiful. There is, they're set up by reading level. And again, it's all free. Okay, here's another one of my favorites of all is uh, tumble books. So if you're not familiar with tumble books, it's an excellent, excellent, excellent tool. So again, tumble books, you, uh, you, you have to pay for that to, for schools uh, to, to purchase it uh, for their students. But here I found, I came across um, this library site, um, Centra, uh, Centralia Public Library in Missouri. And all you have to do is click on here and they have it offered, it's all available for free. Okay. Agreed. The people who are attending here, they can share this link with other people also, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yes, so it's if you want to, Yeah, that's what you want is you want more people, yes. more you know, you parents, share, teachers to have access to these resources. Yes. You can share the whole thing. So you see? <laughs> So it's, it's very, very nice. Um, I'm running in place, listening to my feet pound the pavement, pretending I'm the fastest woman in the world. Okay. Of course. So it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful. If you are in other states, uh, in the United States or across the world, you can use this. Why not? It's available for free. And look at all the beautiful books that are available for free. Hopefully that they don't take this one down because I, I, I that was, I'm sorry, that was a great find. Um, if you are in the, in New York, if you are in New York, if you look right above it, if you, you can create a library card to uh, the New York Public Library for free and they, you can use the ID card, the ID code from that, from your card to uh, access it from this site because it's available through uh, the New York Public Library site for free as well but that's only if you're in New York, but everyone else can use the second box right here. Unite for Literacy is another great one um, that also offers a lot of beautiful books in many different languages, so that's another great one. I'm just not gonna go through that one for, for time's sake. I want to go over, um, I'm going to click on the remote instruction tab first because I have a lot to show you here. So here, if you go to weekly planning, um, for teachers, if you want to uh, organize 
your lesson planning. This is a great uh, lesson planner um, that helps you organize your lessons by week, by uh, every day of the week. It's a great tool. You can download it in PowerPoint or Google Slides, and it's uh, self-explanatory, very easy to use. So that's one uh, thing I want to share with you, and it's right here. Um, the other thing I want to share with you is um, here's another way to engage students. It's called the true or false. Um, true or false uh, slide in Google Slides that you can make a copy of and you basically enter, it's, you use it like a small, like a quick quiz, just not loading fast enough for me, uh, but you enter information here and it, and it becomes, here it is. So you enter information and it becomes like a, a quick, a quick true or false. Um, Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. Check. Uh, you know, correct or not correct. So it's, you see it's easy, it's engaging, so it's just another way. So you can explore that, all you have to do is go to file, make a copy, okay? You'll make a copy of the entire presentation and then it becomes your own and you can edit it any way you want. So that's something else I wanted to show you. Um, blending boards, so blending boards are awesome if you're working with um, children in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. These are created by Orton Gillingham, and if you um, subscribe to them on Facebook, uh, they offer one of these, like every now and then, they'll offer a free blending board. So I just put them in this folder as I've been collecting them. So here's one with a, with a winter theme. Um, so you, again, once you uh, make a copy of it, you can edit it taken this time I have a lot open here uh, but you can change the blending board so you, it starts with like a quick drill uh, you go slide by slide going over the letters and then you get to you get I'm sure I actually want to show you the blending all right so you go to something like this and you put in you know, the the words that you want the kids to blend, so mm, ah, and then you have the, when you actually put it in the, in the presentation mode, you'll see the gingerbread man move across the screen. You see like the next one, he moves to the next sound, to the next sound, and then um, to the third one, and you show, it's an interesting way to uh, teach blending. So that's another one. Okay, all right. So now uh, I want to show you Jamboard. So Jamboard is um, just, okay. So here is Jamboard. So Jamboard is another um, excellent, excellent tool to use, um, and I'm going to show you how to access this. So if you you have to have a, a Google account, so you create a Google account. And uh, once you have your Google account, you go here to the waffle, what we call the waffle, you see these dots here next to, to, the, to my name on top? You click that and you go down and you find Jamboard. You click on Jamboard, okay? And it says now you don't have any jams, but now you're going to create a jam. So you create a jam by... You had earlier given me a Jamboard link. Right. Want me to put that into the chat yes. room? Please do. Yes. Okay. So, um, so you create a Jamboard, and now um, okay. I'm sorry. Let me just too many tabs open. Okay. So here, here is the Jam. Uh, that I created, so you can use it like this. So here is, uh, I put in, based on the cover picture and title, what do you predict the story will, will be about? So basically, um, you, I set up, uh, I put a shape, um, so you can click here. First, you can, you can uh, set the background. So I chose the blue, like, just to set the background, and then, um, you can um, you can choose a shape. So I chose like a square or a rounded a rounded square, like you see here. You can then add the color, and then I 
to add text, you click on the text box here. And then once you click on the text box, you're able to type in it and I put a picture of the book. So we're reading this book. So here's one way you could use it. And then you have the kids, um, I'm sorry, I didn't want that to go on there. Um, but once you have once you have this, this is so this would be the prompt that you've given the kids and the kids now go in there and they enter a sticky note. So here you click on this and the a sticky notes pops up. You choose the color that you want and you write whatever you want. I'm just writing hi for now. You click save That's and great tool for brainstorming. Yep. Right. Or to introduce a new topic. Right. So, so these are the sticky notes that I put in already. So here's like sample of what kids might might um, enter on there. So just deleting this one. So here and then you have multiple pages. So you see on top here, I go now, I go to the next page, and here is what I here is my next question for you. So so try it. So why don't you try it? So click, click on the, the sticky note and then just add something, add, add your idea about how you might be able to use Jamboard with your students. And I'm going to um, show you more. Are you able to do it? I'm not seeing people. Let me let me just show you again. Does everyone does everyone see are able? Are you, I think like um, so. So I'll tell you that when I went in here, um, it only gave me view access. Oh really? Right. Ah. Using using the link that I that that I had. Mm hmm. Now it says I can request edit access, but as of right now, I only have view access. Oh. Okay, I have to get back to that. But in any case, as a tool, this is this is a really an incredible brainstorming tool, and um, I'm I'm sure you know without the pressure of trying to do this. At this exact moment, I'm sure people can figure out pretty quickly how to how to create this in a way, how to create a Jamboard in a way that students can enter. Okay. All right. So anyway, let us go forward, and I'll show you. I don't know why. <laughs> right. But, uh, but anyway, you can use it as a whiteboard as well. So. Um, you can you can use it as a whiteboard to uh, for math or English for any subject. So here I am using. I'm sorry. I have to first click on the pen, um, select the color, okay, and now I can use it this way. So I can use my mouth, my mouse. Sorry, here I'm just <laughs> I'm just using my mouse. Or if I have it on, if I have it on a touch screen. Okay, um, I can use uh, I can use a stylus pen. Um, so I'm just using my finger now. Were you able to see when I was writing? Yes. Okay. So um, so that's that's just that's another way to use it. Okay, and um, you could also use it like this. Uh, you could use it as a again as a reflection page. Uh, you can add an image. Um, so here, if you click on this one, uh, you could add an image from Google Search, and it pops up Google Search. If you have um, upload, if you have a picture on your computer that you want to upload, this also works great for writing. If you want to uh, add an image that you have and you want to use that as a, a prompt, and have the kids respond to the to the image. What do you see in this picture? That's another way to, to use it. Um, but you can select any image. That's how I was able to add this image as a background or just as an image to use for a different way. So since I was we weren't successful with writing on the uh, on the Jamboard, if anyone wants to share 
um, how they might how uh, how they might use it. You can think of it. This is this this other whiteboard ideas that I have on that library, but I this is the simplest way. And you can change the the background. You could make it blank like this. Okay. Uh, you could make it a, a graph if you're using it for math. So there's a variety of ways to 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 use it as a whiteboard, which is great. Um, and, I, and I think in terms of sharing that when you create. If, you, if you've ever created a Google Doc or Google spreadsheet in the past and you wanted to share it, it comes, when you create it, it starts in as restricted. But when you go to the sharing options, there's a sharing option to change so that anyone with a link can be an editor. And so if you, you know, yeah. when you're creating your Jamboards and you go to the sharing options, oh. you the sharing options so that anybody Thank with a you. link can be an editor. That's what I didn't do. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mitch. <laughs> That's why you couldn't write. I'm sorry. Some, I didn't think. Yes. No, so now I made it. Now you I don't have it. to be sorry. <laughs> these, these resources that you're sharing are so incredibly like, valuable. No, I'm sorry. You know why I was good? Because I, I thought I did that already. And that's why I was confused. How come you couldn't write? Because I, I really imagined that I did that, but I missed that step. Thank you so much for reminding me. So I think now you can you can definitely uh, write on it. So if you go to this second page now, you can definitely try to put uh, a sticky note on there. Please let me let someone write something so I can see that you're using it, <laughs> that you're able to write. Oh, definitely you can write now. Yes. So there you go. Very good. Oh, someone is even moving the <laughs> Okay. All right. So, well, you want to tell your, your students not to move the actual box or whatever, your, your template, but they can just um, enter their sticky notes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you remember. Um, I, I just imagined that I had done that already, and that's why I was like, why, why they can't enter? But you see there, some of you are writing, some of you are entering things, so there's a variety of, of, of things that you can do with this. You just have to, um, you just have to think about it. So here's something else. Here's another one that I want to show you that I really like. This is an, a way like to use it, to, you can use it as a mood meter. For, for young children, like you could put all their names on these sticky notes down here and how you're feeling today. And all they have to do is just move their name. They find their name and they move it depending on how they're feeling. Isn't that a cool way? Wow. So, yeah, I really like this one. And, 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 and these are, I got from a site and I think the, the link is on the interactive, on the, on the virtual library. It's there, but um, I just put them here for you so you can see. But this is a great way. You just set it up, put the children's name, and you can make this as a as another way to engage the kids, to just put how you feel today. And that promotes a discussion, right, about, about their feelings, a nice way to do that. Um, there's, there's the other one I wanted to show you. You can use it uh, uh, four corners. So you can put a question here, you could put a sticky note with a prompt or a question and you could um, put a response in each corner and um, or put a response in each corner and have, have again the kids put their names with, uh, with, with the one with uh, the one that reflects uh, how they think or how they feel. So you could do that also. So that's another uh, cool way to use it. Okay, so here's another one that I want to show you now. This is an interactive tile board that I that I created, um, and it's really to help teachers with teaching um, phonemic awareness and phonics. So if you use this in the in the edit mode, like you see here, um, you are able to drag the tiles into the box. So if I say if I'm um, if I'm practicing phonemic awareness um, with sounds with the kids, and I say um, what sounds do you hear in the word come? So we say k, uh, m. So k, uh, m. Okay, so you're demonstrating there are three sounds and come. So this is a great way to use it for phonemic awareness. You can um, look at the, the other boards and they, um, they now they include letter tiles and these letter tiles, there's four of each. 
So the alphabet, um, there's four of each tile, so you can use multiple tiles to spell words, and it goes on to every board, has more letter tiles there. I'm adding the diagraphs, the vowel teams, and um, there's also the R control vowels um, as you go on and more. So this is, again, it's free for you to use, where you have to just make a copy of it and then you can uh, download it and you can manipulate it in your own way. Okay, so I know we're, we're, we're over on time. So I just, before uh, we're done, I just want you to, uh, I wanted to show you the other example of the Padlet that I wanted to show you. So here's how this teacher is using this Padlet. Um, she's using it, uh, where, what are your, what are you going to write your information book? They're writing information books. And this is, you can set up your Padlet in columns like this. So now she put a, a column for each student and each student goes in there and writes their idea. What they were, so she modeled first with her. Um, she added her topic idea and her picture. And now the children, and if you, if you scroll to the right, you can see the rest of the children, you see? There, and some of these kids, of course, are English language learners. They're having trouble writing. Um, these are second graders, but some of them, she told me she helped to, to add a picture. She helped them add a picture. She helped them uh, type in their responses. But this, again, it's another brainstorming tool. It's a great way for the kids to collaborate and see what each of them is writing. Um, so this is another um, really cool way of using Padlet. Okay, and if you need, um, if you're not familiar with this and you need any help, just let me know and um, I can support you with that. So this is, uh, this is available here, like these uh, resources that I just showed. Uh, these are tutorials for using Google Apps. Uh, I showed you the blending boards and um, here is the interactive letter tiles. This is also a really nice one um, that's available through the University of Florida. Um, okay, it's this one, and it's another really nice one. Again, the tiles are movable, you see? Um, it's very nice. Um, you know, you get the point. <laughs> so it's this is another one, this intermediate and um, this is, you might use this one, let's say you could use it for explicit instruction. You could also use it with your kids at home. You can give them, so it's something different, let's say, and you could give them this to use at home for extra practice. So anybody can access this for free and you have all the, you have all the links here. And you have the Jamboard templates here that you can use. Uh, there's other digital whiteboards. I just wanted to show you the, where is the, so they're all here and Padly here I was talking about the referral link so if you click on this referral link here with my uh, with my name um, you, you'll get a new one and I'll get a new one so every time you refer uh, to three people you get a free Padlet so you get a free different thing all right let me see what else I so parent resource Rita, I, I just posted the link to the survey because if people have to go at least maybe yeah. quickly I know it's, yes. click on the survey, because this has been, to me, this has been mm -hmm. so fantastic. Normally I would have interrupted, but mm -hmm. um, you were, you know, you had such incredible information that I didn't want to disturb the, the flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so yeah, thank you so much. And, and I'll, uh, you have the survey uh, uh, link, um, so uh, Mitch just shared it, and maybe Mitch, you could share it again when you send your follow-up, if you like. Oh, sure, yep. So, so maybe people, um, so I'm just going to uh, continue for just a little bit more, I just need a few minutes. If anybody wants to uh, hang on, that's great. Um, I just wanna show you very quickly, like th these are other great, um, great sites for parents. So this is in Spanish and in English. Um, here is it is in English. And every day of the of the every day of the year, they have a different video. They have a different book. So this is a great resource for parents that you can use. So that's the only one I'm going to highlight from the parent page. So if you can include the link in the chat box, um, uh, or maybe let me see if I can do it um, for uh, for this 
you oh we already share it they have this right they already you access to you access already the virtual library right right i included the link to the virtual library and yes. um and, and all right. the so anybody have any questions i'm sorry it's just uh, it's a it's a lot i know a anybody have any questions that um and i would really appreciate it if you're if you're able to um maybe so just speak if people need to get in touch with you, do you have a Twitter account? Yes. How would you like people to reach you? So here is my information. You can uh, reach me at Twitter. My Twitter handle is T-S-I-H-L-Y, first initial and last name. And you, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can email me at T-S-I-H-L-Y, the gmail.com. And this is my uh, blog and site that I have more resources there. Um, I'm gonna have to take a look at your blog. That looks because it's 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 got to be incredible. Thank you. So if you if anybody has any extra questions or I missed something or I didn't get to, I, I I'm sorry. There's just been a lot to talk about that I we didn't really get to hear um, your voices. So if anybody have um, anybody has any question or anything that I missed, please ask now or you can feel free to email me with any of your questions. So let's look at the chat. Yeah, my guess is that people are a little bit overwhelmed because there are so many incredible resources. Um, and I know a couple people have asked about the archives and uh, we are recording this and I'll have the archive up by sometime on Monday and I'll email everybody who registered. Um, and it'll also be on the EdChat Interactive website, but I'll email everybody who registered with a link to the archive. Thank you. No, so, thank you. Yeah, thank so you. No questions. If nobody has any questions, um, please uh, complete the survey and share that. I really appreciate your feedback and it helps me to improve uh, uh, going forward and help me think about what people um, want help with. And again, feel free to email me, please. Um, Just thank, thank you everybody for, you know, for giving up a portion of your weekend yes. and coming here and continuing to learn. And thank you for all you're doing for our kids. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult time and you know, we're all in this time of uncertainty and a little bit of stress. So thank you all. And especially thank you to GRID for coming here and sharing the resources and this whole framework for reaching kids in during remote learning, but also when we when we go back when things aren't going to be the same. So um, thank you. You're 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 great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. If, you, if anybody wants to come to other sessions, please do. And to Grid, maybe we'll have you back again next year with 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 other with other topics. Sure, because sure, I would love to. Just let me know, and please feel free to email me. Hi, Angie. <laughs> I see you on here. How are you? I see some familiar faces. <laughs> so everybody, have a great weekend, rest of the weekend, and. Uh, uh, and a very happy holiday, which, whichever holidays yes. you, you celebrate. Uh, hope holiday, you get to see everyone. your family. And, yes. Um, you know, take care.